Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to find a power series representation for a function using a technique called term by term integration. Instead of making an algebraic replacement or differentiating term by term, we're going to integrate a function which has a known power series representation. The trick here is taking the function that you're given and recognizing it either as a derivative or now antiderivative of a more basic function. Now we're going to start by recognizing that natural log of 1 plus x, that is the antiderivative of 1 divided by 1 plus x. And the important thing here is we can easily find a power series representation for 1 divided by 1 plus x using the result from the geometric series. So let's start with that. We're going to find a power series for this function that we're integrating. So that's your first step. We in fact did that as a previous problem. Rewrite that addition as minus a negative. And now you can just make a replacement. Replace in there with negative x and you'll get your power series, which we're going to integrate term by term. The sum goes from 0 to infinity. We have negative x to the n. And you'll definitely want to simplify this to make the term by term integration easier. Take the nth power of each of those, and you'll get the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n. All right, so let's connect the pieces here. First, our function, it's the antiderivative of 1 divided by 1 plus x. So I'm just going to copy that down right here. Second step, we're going to take that function that we're integrating, replace it with its power series representation. And that term is negative 1 to the n times x to the n. And we're going to interchange the inner integral and the summation here. And we're going to focus on just integrating x to the n. This is basically a bunch of powers of x. And powers of x are very easy to integrate. What we're going to be using is the antiderivative of x to the n. That's really simple. We apply the power rule. Just make sure your exponent is not negative 1, which we're avoiding here due to the sums here. n starts with 0 and goes to infinity. So the exponent is never going to be negative 1. Just go ahead and apply the power rule. For antiderivatives, you get 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. So let me just write this to make it look a little bit easier. I'm going to interchange the sum with the integral. And I just need to worry about integrating x to the n. And that's really simple. That's basically your power rule. We're just going to be careful. Remember, when you integrate, you get a constant. I'm going to put that constant, c, right in front. And now, the term by term integration, we just integrate x to the n and keep everything else the same in our summation. n still goes from 0 to infinity. When you integrate term by term, typically there's no change to the starting index. Negative 1 to the n stays. And now your antiderivative or integral of x to the n, that comes out to 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. And that basically is your power series representation. Now, we can clean this up a little bit, but 
let's go ahead first and notice our function natural log of one plus x is gonna come out to equal this. So let me just write down our function with the power series here. Natural log of one plus x has this as its power series representation, a constant c plus the sum from zero to infinity. I'm gonna write those as a single fraction, negative one to the n in the numerator divided by n plus one, and then times x to the n plus one. Now, you're gonna to wanna to figure out your interval of convergence here. Since we made use of the geometric series, this is true when absolute value of x is less than one, and this is equivalent to saying x is between negative one and one. So this is basically your interval And remember, you always wanna check both endpoints. If you check by plugging in x is one, one to any power would be one, and what you'd be left with is the alternating series, negative one to the n divided by n plus one, and that is a convergent alternating series. So we can actually include positive one in our interval but if you were to plug in the other endpoint, negative one, you're gonna find that leads to a divergent infinite series. So we get our interval of convergence here, negative one to positive one, and it includes positive one. All right, now typically here, you can actually sometimes solve for the constant of integration by plugging in a value of x in your interval of convergence. And we're gonna think what value would be easy to evaluate for natural logs? Natural log of one. That means I'm gonna to wanna to plug in x as zero, which is in your interval of convergence. So if we plug in x as zero, on the left we get natural log of one equals c, but notice all these terms in your infinite series here, plug in x is zero, zero to any power, that's just gonna to evaluate to zero. So what we find here, c comes out to be natural log of one, but natural log of one is zero. So we find that c is zero. And what we get is our power series representation for the function natural log of one plus x, your constant of integration is zero, and we get this summation here going from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n divided by n plus one times x to the n plus one. And more importantly, we also get the interval of convergence negative one to positive one, where we include positive one as well. And there we go. That's the technique of term by term integration. And I hope you enjoyed the content and learned a lot from this video. If you did, as always, support the channel, like and subscribe.